TV, you get the gaffer, Michael Kennedy here. Um, Michael, it's been some time, uh, some time since we last caught up, probably a couple of months at least. Yeah, uh, you've played 20 games in all, all competitions, won 15, drew 1, lost 4, 1 percentage of 75 percent, average goals 3.85 to be specific per game. Currently sitting top of the table, long way to go mate, and no even halfway yet, you must be happy enough with how things are progressing. Uh, Aye, listen, our main priority is obviously always trying to win the league, so happy the fact that we're already sitting top, I think last time last year we were considerable distance away from maybe the, the, the top few places, so I'm happy in that regard. I'm a bit disappointed about the Cups, to be honest with you, just obviously looking at Mike Campbell on the day where Burton's deserve to win the game, the game against Lund University, I think we disrespect if we don't draft out the nine men, we're comfortable with 2-0, I think we don't sure. win that. Uh, but I'm all in all happy that, 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 that we're, we're top of the league, I think. We're looking back to the exception of Ireland's game, any game we've dropped points, a game we've dropped into 10 men, a free game or something like that, so... Uh, but I'm happy with the consistency of performance here. I think ultimately at a period of time, consistent performance wins your trophies. So happy with that, happy with where we are and prepared for the second half of the season that lies ahead. I think once you get probably into January, I think things properly heat up. I think the Cubs start to settle down a wee bit with middle league games and then we get a better understanding of how it's going to plan it probably in the next four to six weeks. All in all, just now happy with where we are in terms of second half of the league. And, but I've, I've under the illusions of obviously the challenge that lie ahead to try and retain our title. So, but I'm happy. Good. Uh, I mean, we talk about those those statistics. I suppose one thing that your Darvo scored last season was maybe slightly critical of was maybe not being clinical enough. I think obviously just under an average of four per game and goes to all of the park. You must be particularly pleased at that. I I, I think listen, I anybody who knows me who knows my sort of philosophy, but always be a possession based team. So we'll probably go really aggressive in the attack. In terms of level of patience, in terms of how we attack teams, so obviously that has an impact on the number of chances you create. Uh, but this season we've been a wee bit more aggressive and the think further we've been a lot better conversion out the opportunities we've created. And we've created a number of opportunities as well there to be fair. So it's something we wanted to work on in, in the summer and through the early part of the season and you can see the fruits of that now that we've scored quite an average, a high average and a goals per game. So and I think we're conceding average as well, we're doing slightly as well on last year as well. So at one point six or something. Uh, so we're, we're, all in all we're in, in, in a really strong position and which everybody knows a really, really competitive environment. Yeah, and obviously having good having a uh, Al McKenzie I think sitting in eight, just one off the top of the table and me and McShane sitting in five, so particularly pleasing that, that these players are, are obviously scoring as well as, well as the main strikers, etc. I'm happy for Alan, to be fair. I think yeah. Alan's always been, I think, one of these set of forwards or forward at this level who's a lot of his endeavour and talent maybe goes unnoticed because he does so much in the team outside, probably being a natural sort of set of forward who is quite selfish. I think what you've seen this year is that he's became a proper number nine. We've tried to work to stay between the woods for the goals. Also, still the other attributes that yeah, he's got to scope to the level he's at, but to be a bit more selfish and I said this year he became an all round number nine, he's probably been in my opinion the best that's ever forward the league this season. I don't think fans would disagree with that, I have to say. Uh, and sticking with the playing squad, I firmly believe we've probably got real strength and depth across this squad at the minute, Mick. So just how important will this become now? We're obviously heading for winter, heavy parts, injuries, suspensions, etc. I, I, I think you need a strong squad to to win the league. I think if you look probably back here the last couple of years, I was one prior to that, or can like one for a number of years, I think you would look at the squads that have competed and won the league, you would see a lot of depth in them. And I think you need that to go through a campaign, particularly in this league, it's so demanding physically. Yeah, we can be good. Dynamics and the vibes are so different every other week. So you need a strong, dynamic squad to get you through that. I think we're in a strong position. I think everybody's fit, but Jinky's got a wee niggle on his knee, which he's just about to come back for. David Sines, obviously. On his way back to his, his really bad thing you feel last year, so all in all, we're in a really, really strong position in terms of the depth, number of players fit and available. Uh, but listen, I've been, since I've been at Darvo, I think one of the issues have always been, like you see, we've been on the range of the so it's good to go through a period of, uh, there's not a high number, but I know how quickly things can change. But they're really not in a reasonably strong position in terms of the quality of the quote group. Yeah, I, I think you could probably read my notes, that was going to be the next question, <laughs> obviously, fans. 
uh, every every week at Recreation Wednesday he's coming back, so that's good that he's he's near him. And obviously, what was it? What was the the, the injury with Jinky? Was it was it nose bad? I think you, the first thought was cruciate. Is it nose bad? I know it's nose bad. He's, 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 he's just started to join in training now, so right. he's very very close to coming back. Like training to be fair, so he's uh-huh. not far away at all. Good. David's probably been ready probably the last three or four weeks. Uh, Two elements to that, where do you throw them in because you don't try the game time. Right. Try the game time. Big game and obviously exactly. the team's doing well, just doing right. the back pretty settled. Listen, yes. there was a small chance on Friday night with Darrow, and Darrow was struggling on Friday night, but a virus of Darrow wouldn't have made it on Friday and David would have come in. So, but he's very, very close. He's now getting to that anxious stage where uh-huh. he just wants to get back just to the club. Back play now. Listen, he's, I think David's have done a lot of grown up since he came to this club, to be honest. You know, he's had him, he's the last one or five, six weeks, he's been a credit to himself. Uh, but he understands that he's an absolute massive part of the club moving forward. He's still in near and nearly Peter's his career and we see him as an integral part of the group and the squad and the club as we move forward in the next few years. So he'll, he'll get a lot of time to play off the club, which is getting him back involved and back at the start of Definitely. Good. Uh, positive news. So looking beyond the league, uh, one of the biggest games in, in obviously <laughs> club's history as we face SPFL, third biggest team in Aberdeen. Is, is it true Jim Goodwood's been actively broadcasting that he's coming down to turn you over? <laughs> nah, I'm kidding. No, in all seriousness though, how, how will you prepare uh, and the players approach this game? Really all the pressure's probably on Aberdeen shoulders as a big club. A free hit as it were. To be honest with you, I've not really paid much attention to it. There's been probably been people speaking to me about it than the other way around. To be fair, I'm just trying to concentrate on which is your priority, which is the league, so I've been really focused on that. Uh, I've not really done any analysis on that, I'll get to probably one of the games, so I'll get a bit of game starts at Tencastle, I'll get to that and from that probably we build an update, we'll probably start to prepare, but just now, from an internal perspective for the team and the squad, it's not something I've discussed really, my priority is to make sure that we're winning league games and we're staying to the league and when we get into that we can prepare properly for it, we'll be able to do that absolute utmost respect they deserve as a club, their history and prestige in that, their fan base and obviously they've got a very talented, gifted group of players there. So we need to just concentrate on our bread and butter just now we can be good and then in the final days leading up they will get properly prepared for lives ahead tactically and stuff like that. And it's interesting that you say tactically, what kind of my next question was aside for obviously tactically, how do they prepare how do players prepare themselves? Mentally, do they have to change diet physically? Does the intensity change at training for a game? I know obviously the golfing level and, and I assume fitness will be a massive part in the equation, but will you change anything or? No, I, I think we'll just prepare as we're playing another team yeah. at another level in another game. I, I think that's really all you can do. I think you really start to change the dynamics of how you prepare mm-hmm. for, for, for a specific game. I think the reality is you cause more problems and actually finding solutions. So we we'll just prepare Max and normally the players will have the name between. I think we're Foxy, we've got a lot of experienced players ah, in, this, in the group who have played at a really good yeah, level yeah. in this country. Uh, so that helps in terms of being prepared mentally and physically for what lies ahead. In terms of training, it's as intense and demanding and as challenging as, as, as it always is. It's, we try and create an environment that very much reflects how we, try, how we play on a Saturday, so nothing will change in that regard whatsoever. Uh, but we're conscious, obviously, Aberdeen's yeah, of quality within the group. Listen, fitness are full time athletes, they're part time athletes, so there's obviously a bit different yeah. fitness. But the reality is, it's here 90 minutes, it's, it's whether a league campaign or a uh, two legged tie, so the reality is, it'll have an impact on the suit, but not a significant impact. We'll prepare tactically the way we do it all week, we'll try and get the ball out, we'll try and dominate it, we'll try and do what we do every other week. Nothing's going to change in terms of approach, the challenge will be as can you do that against that level of opposition? Right. And, and, and um, if we don't, then we'll cause ourselves the end of problems and I'll need to take a bit of responsibility <laughs> for that. But we'll certainly not change right. any, any, any dynamic of how we play it. Like just, that's not the way I work. I yeah. just have a belief in the philosophy how we play. And that's it's important we get there and try and stick to that. They believe and, and, and help us trust in the players in the group and we're building how we work. So. Absolutely, and, 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 and it's on my, my sheet here, I'm saying it's 90 minutes and anything can happen. Do you, do you start dreaming of a, a shock upset or is it this been pretty much a fairy tale for certainly the fans, maybe not so much the players even getting to this point? Or are you firmly grounded for the sake of the team? Just trying to show that. No, I, 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 think, I think when the draw comes, there's an initial bit of excitement. There's obviously a bit of buzz out of place for the next few days and the reality is that has died down there yeah. because obviously the game has been quite a bit away. Yeah. I think from my own perspective, I think you need to believe you can win the game. I mean, that, that's ultimately it. But also be yeah. respectful of the different levels in terms of where we are in the pyramid system. 
Uh, but I firmly believe that if we can impose ourselves in the game and impose our style in the game, which we'll try and do, then I think we can cause our body problems. Well, that's enough to go win the game. Yeah. We'll be decided on the day, but I'm, I'm, or on the night, but I'm sure. Listen, I've got absolute belief in the players we've got. As I say, we'll get a philosophy of work on, it's embedded in the training programme, it's embedded in how we play every Saturday, and it's critically important we stick to the beliefs. I think if, if you stand by that every other week, you can't then get to one game and all that. One day you try to become compact and find the back and defend your area and stuff like that. It's just going to have a play. And as I say, we'll see how successful we can be at it at that level of football, but we'll give it a proper go. I think we owe that to, to the fans and to the community uh, <laughs> to have a, have a proper go, and I'm sure we'll back us massively in terms of how we approach it. So no, we'll, we'll look forward to it when it comes around. Uh, if those beliefs are anything to go by, Mick, for at present, you do realise that. Darrell are in the Scottish Cup, the top scorer so far in all the other rounds. I think we're sitting at 23 goals. It's the main feat to get into the fourth no, round. I, I think when you, start, when you start to get to the third round and you've got beaten in throws, I, I, I mean, a, a League One team that are very steady in that league, we're probably third when we played them, dominated the game, possession, gave loads of opportunities, thoroughly deserved to win. I, I think that needs to be belief in, in, in the qualities, but I think, I think that's. The league for you as well, but we've got that quality, not just with another group, with another group, so we've got really, really successful seasons. So I think you just need to stick to that. Uh, the belief that you can go there and you can cause some kind of upset. But again, no disrespect to the group of players that we've chosen, you know, there's still a, there's a massive gulf in the quality between the scores and Aberdeen. But I said, cup upset, upsets oh. happen all the time through the rest of the cup, that's yeah. part of the romance. So as I say, we'll look forward to the conjunction, it's probably. A massive game in the club's history, but oh, arguably one of the biggest games ever, if not it, the right. biggest yeah. game. So, Definitely. Right, it's Definitely. something to be proud of. So, uh, and we talk about the occasion then, just, just to finish up, because that's really, I just wanted to touch on where we were at with things. What would be your message to fans, and I suppose anybody else who might be thinking about coming to the Aberdeen game that's maybe thinking after it's a Monday watching the TV, what, what would you be telling them? I, I, I think. The most important thing about this occasion for me is the actually fact you're playing Aberdeen in, in the Scottish Cup. I think for me it's it's an opportunity to bring the team together properly in class numbers. I, I've always believed that when I started this project a couple of years ago that I wanted the club to be a beacon for the whole community. I wanted it to be something that we could do to bring people together of different backgrounds or different walks of life. People who probably actually don't speak to one another on a daily basis, not all communication in this modern world with social media and stuff like that. And I wanted the club to be that vehicle that would bring us all together. And that has naturally gradually happened. The numbers have increased. There's still no uh, number we would want them to get it, but that, that's a steady progress and that comes through success and building relationships with, with, with the community. And the success we've had today has all been due to the community back yes, It's been a massive part of it. We've sure. got all of the playing squad, the coaching staff. We've really got into the Arvo, we've got into the people on it, we know if all the fans really by name, we've got a really, really close relationship with them. And if we're going to have any degree of chance of winning the game, then we'll need the town to come in its thousands. And for us, beyond that, is it's how you then capture their imaginations and capture that sort of loyalty love for the club and affiliation rate and how we grow that fan base and how they can see us moving forward. So nights like this night become something that's a regular occurrence in the Darvo. And if that's aspiration for us all, and I'm sure it is, then the only way we're going to achieve that is, is getting the town right behind us in every other week. But this is a massive opportunity for them to come down, and I'm sure they will come out in the absolute numbers of supporters, and it will be greatly appreciated. But for me, it's about building relationships with people who are known actually come on week in, week in fact, and can we get them in by the money romance to that occasion, romance the club. And hopefully, as we move forward, the journey that lies ahead, they are there supporting us and driving us forward as any great fan base would, any community would. But I think every day, day well, for me, we'll always be about the fans and always be about the community. So, it's leaving a legacy, it's on creating moments and memories of people sure. to look back on that a small town like Darvo eh, is, is on the map, significantly on the map. Yeah. Well, that's it. I mean, who would have thought three years ago, whatever it was when you started the project, that Darvo would get their, their Scottish Cup license, play play an SPF, arguably the third best team in the country, and, you know, win two or three league trophies? Nobody thought that. No, I, I, well, I had a belief about it. You probably did. <laughs> I think that's the thing, because I've got a lot of belief myself on so how we work and, 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 and the group of players we brought in and stuff like that. So I always believed it. The reality is at that point, when we were trying to sell that vision and that journey, and they disrespected it that way at that point, no. it wasn't something that seemed realistic. But 
we've only had two playing seasons. We won the championship. We won the for the championship. Yeah. Covid kicked in. We won the Premier League last year. Yeah. We're two and a half years in terms of playing. The strides we've made in that now time. is absolutely remarkable. I, and even so much for the Scottish Cup. We are so the fact we're league champions. Mm -hmm. But if I think of what we achieved in that first year in that league, it's so demanding. The West region, yeah. So physical. Loads of club with history and experience at it. And I know we've been able to recruit and have a really good quality squad. Oh, but there's loads of quality in that group, uh, in that league. So that, that's been the most significant thing for me. But again, it's just part of the process, it's part of the journey. It's important to understand that we've not arrived, we've not achieved nothing yet. And we need to keep striving forward on the pitch, after the pitch. And again, go back to that. The biggest driver behind that should be and will always be the fans. Brilliant. Well, thanks and uh, best of luck and uh, good luck for your game on Saturday. Just to remind fans for an interview that obviously the, the sad loss of club president uh, Peter Orwell, but having a minute silence and his, his name will live on as we dedicate the, the big match to Peter. So um, for fans coming, we'll have that minute silence. Aye, that's absolutely heartbreaking to be fair. Aye. I think uh, when I first came to the club, Peter's man of the people I met. I think, he, I think there's always people in your back of your mind when you're building success and you're creating things and moments like that. There's always certain individuals who you think about yeah. and I think Peter was, has always been in the back of my mind every time we've made one straight forward in that journey and he's a massive loss, I'm absolutely devastated and I was a gentleman, somebody who's seen the club through probably some of his darkest times Correct. and uh, a massive loss to the club and needed the overall community and I'm sure you've been with his thoughts and prayers and stuff. Yeah, it will be. Well, thanks for speaking to Dunnebrae TV, thanks for your time Mick. Cheers. Cheers.